Greetings YouTube and welcome to my latest weapons build. Uh, I think it was back in 21 I made this particular war club and I used a pressure treated uh, baluster like an external like a porch or something like that like a deck and I used these big thick plates but they were one inch but they're a quarter inch thick um, and I used some big uh, I think these are three eighth inch uh, bolts and uh, uh, yeah, they're just bolts because they're wash a bolt on one, a bolt head on the other end, and then a nut on the other side. And it's it is incredibly, unbelievably dangerous, but it's also really heavy. It's not a small, it's not a light thing. It's very top heavy, and it, it is not a fast thing. You hit with this, your target's going down. You miss recovery time is going to be, you know, you're going to you be able to get your mail sent to you first. Um, and then recently, I made this. Uh, so I, I called it the, my, my Hydra Flail, and I used an oak baluster, which is much lighter, and I used one inch, but one eighth inch laggots on this, and I really liked the way this came out. I used, only used quarter inch um, threaded rod with uh, acorn nuts. I liked the look, I liked the, the overall feel, and it came out very well. So I'm, I was thinking, well, what if I make a version of like this, of this? Uh, unfortunately, um, balusters like this are not cheap. This is like 14 bucks for a single baluster. So yeah, not, not cheap at all. And so I really couldn't swing that at the moment. So instead of doing this, I went with more pressure treated lumber. So this is only, this is less than $3. So there's there's a big difference. There's like a ten dollar difference between this and this. That's a that's a big difference. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get. Uh, I have the the flat stock right here. I'm going to cut four pieces a foot long. Uh, I'm going to put points on them to make it a little more visually interesting, as I did not do on this. Give it a little bit more visual appeal, um, and then drill out three holes in each one of them. Going to be for a quarter inch. Uh, bolts they're going to have to be slightly different because I have to have them pass pat go past each other so the spacing on the two sets will be different than the spacing on the other set um, and I will be doing uh, chamfering this like I did here and I used a hand plane as opposed to this which I used a draw knife on which worked but it was it's it was there wasn't as much control it's very uneven it's it doesn't feel as good this has a much better feel to it it's much more comfortable and part of that of course is the fact it's a tighter grain material because it's oak as opposed to this stuff which is inherently more heavy because it's pressure treated this whole thing right here already weighs more than this shaft even with the laggots on it so this is still going to end up being heavier but it'll be lighter than this and i think it's going to have a better look to it um, with the points and with a better chamfer on it so we're going to see how that comes out because um, it's not, it's not going to look quite as tidy as this one does. Because this oak is just beautiful. If I could get my hands on some cheap oak balusters like this, I would definitely you know, want to do that because it, it's really nice to work with. Um, there's a reason that uh, woodworkers enjoy hardwoods over, over stuff like this. Alrighty, so first thing I'm going to do is put these two weapons away, get them, get them out of my way, and then probably start cutting up this... Uh, the laggots themselves. Uh, the two sets of laggots are cut. Uh, we have a hole on this one that comes in and starts at a half inch. That's an inch and they're offset by five inches from there. So if I, uh, that's at six and that's at 11. This is at five and a half and ten and a half. Um, so that's going to make sure that they pass through each other. Now not interfering with each other inside the, uh, uh, the wooden shaft while still looking roughly visually very close to the same position. Now I have this huge ass piece of steel I picked up at an estate sale. It's just an old piece of steel. It has no particular historical value as far as I can, I'm concerned. And uh, so I cut this block out of it. I had to cut off this end because the space, I, was that was not two inches wide. If that had been two inches wide, I would have cut out of there, but it isn't. Because this is roughly two inches wide and this is hand forged so it's not exact um, but it gives me a rough two inch square because this is going to be the plate that goes on the end of the of the, the war club this is going to give it more oomph at the end not to mention it's going to end up having four 
impact points in and of itself as well as the four laggots um, to boost and that means that these will have a positive stop because um, I will install this first and then these um, so that will help me to help me locate everything I need as far as the holes are concerned for the, when I'm drilling through the the uh, shaft itself um, so I'm going to drill I have to make a diagonal across here and I'm going to drill two holes um, that were going to be within the uh, diameter of the or the, the dimensions of the shaft and I'm going to put in two screws boom boom on that diagonal which means that the bolts going this way will not interfere with them and I'm going to use three inch um, wood screws because this is a big ass piece of steel that ain't small um, and I want to hold it in place so we're going to use uh, I'm going to use uh, three inch uh, deck screws so the first thing I'm going to need to do right now I think is going to be lay this out drill two holes and then uh, figure out what diameter I need first of all and then drill two holes for that and then chamfer them because I want the the heads of these to be just below the surface of this. I don't want you to see the, see these two from, from the side. You'll be able to see them from the end, obviously, but I don't want you to be able to see them from the side. So I'm going to uh, countersink them so that they sit just below that surface. And I would normally drill a piece like this when it was bigger, but this is such a big piece and I just, I could have done it with this, I guess, but I wanted to get this off. I could have left that on for the drilling, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, it's a big enough piece that I'll be able to hold it in cl with the clamping um, and still drill that safely. This is, a, like I said, it's two inches square, so that gives me enough room to play with. So let's do some layout, and then I need to mark the holes and then uh, drill them and then chamfer them so that they will fit these uh, screws. So here is the end plate installed. I don't know what this stuff is, but it drills like a dream. It really does drill beautifully. It, the drill bit went through this without any difficulty. Nice, even, tiny chips, just lovely stuff. Don't have any idea what it is, but it's great for drilling. So I'm looking forward to using some of this in the future for other projects. It's gonna make my life easier. Um, so now that I have this in place, I'm going to go about tapering the shaft first because that'll be easier without the lag it's in place. Um, so I'm going to set up a rig for the chamfer and if I can I'm going to set it up so I can actually show you guys how I did it the last time and we'll see if it goes as well with the pressure treated lumber as it did with the oak. The oak was beautiful. I have no idea how it's going to work with this. We're going to find out. All right so here I have the setup two clamps holding this down in a v-block so it holds it at a 45 degree angle because at the moment i don't have any other kind of setups i have made a pencil mark at one foot because that is how far down the laggots are going to go and i'm going to put visually just going to hold that at the one foot mark and then i'm going to go ahead and start going that way now i have not done this pressure treated so let's see how it goes mm, not bad thing I am looking forward to is I'm currently designing a outdoor work surface because I really don't like having chips in my shop. I work with a lot of cutting metal which means I use an angle grinder a lot. I don't like the idea of uh, there being a lot of uh, wood chips in my shop when I have sparks everywhere. That makes me really, really nervous. So, uh, <laughs> looking forward to having the space outdoors that I can work on metal with. It'll make my life a lot easier. I think I own a larger plane. I just don't know where the heck it is. It's something that I had kept around because it was like a pass down to me or as a gift or something. And, uh, 
so I didn't use it for a very, very long time. Um, so I don't know where it is. <laughs> really gotta find it. Because this would obviously be easier if I had a larger plane. And I'm probably gonna terrify the uh, woodworkers in the world because <laughs> I had to I had to sharpen this because when I got it it was it was a little on the dull side and I just did it freehand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that's terrifying. They're gonna say, tell me how wrong that was, but it's uh, it's done already. So that's how I do it. I need to do that three more times until I get octagonal. Um, I just thought I'd show you how it goes, and uh, it is it is kind of meditative. I'll be completely honest. It really is. And when I'm finished, I end up with a taper, which is what I want, and I end up with a rough rock, rock, uh, octagonal, which is also what I want. And so that gives me the uh, the kind of uh, the grip that I that I'm going for. And I'm just going to leave this angle here. I don't really see any reason to take it off. This is not hard it, hurting anything. So here we have all the components. This is all drilled. I've got my laggots, um, all four of them, and I've got. Uh, six pieces of threaded rod and a bunch of acorn nuts. So now it's time for assembly and then this project's done. So here we have the completed club with the much better octagonal handle than I had on the first uh, first model. Uh, and the lighter laggots, I like the way they look. I like the points, it gives it a better dressing. The scale of the size of bolts I use I think is better. I didn't really need to use bolts quite as big as I did in the last one. And I don't think I needed to use quarter inch thick uh, steel. This, this uh, eighth inch stuff is working perfectly and having this plate here shifts the weight up here. It's overall, it's lighter obviously, but it shifts the weight up here, which is where you want it. This is where you want the weight. You don't want the weight here. You want the impact there. That's why hammers are shaped the way they are. Um, so this is going to be just a monster. I mean, seriously, this has got, I didn't take any burrs off this thing at all. It is, it is just, that's going to just hurt, hurt so damn bad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is a great little project. It took me like one morning. I think I've been down here for, I don't know, just shy of three hours. Uh, everything came out nice. Um, I be, I was really happy of the fact that I've very much tuned in how to get pairs of laggots to come out the way I want them. So what I do is I drill, I mark and drill one, and then I clamp it to the other one. And then use that as the template and then actually bolt that through that hole, then do the other end, bolt through that hole, and then do the middle. And I've gotten it, I've got them so that then now they are an absolute pair, which is awesome. So I'm going to take this outside, take some photos for uh, this video, as well as some stills for my Deviant Art account, which you should follow me on. Um, it's the permanent home of where I store my images from my weapons builds and you should also follow me on Instagram because I post bargains I find, scrap I find that end up in the projects, um, and of course cute cat pictures and who doesn't love cute cat pictures. So thanks for being here today and I hope that you'll be here for the next one.